Hey everyone, Owan reached out, oh, I'm, there's no logo, there we go, Owan reached out and uh, wanted to send me a tool, and I said, of course, I have a couple Owan tools, I have a USB oscilloscope, I have a benchtop a multimeter, and this is something that I already have, but in a different brand, and I'm curious to see how good the O1 version is going to be. It was probably not the easiest way to open this. A box inside a box. Don't think there's anything else in here. Nope. So this is their clamp meter. Very plain pa packaging. Uh, CM2100B233 some some and then uh, Bluetooth I don't think there's two L's in Bluetooth but that's okay okay we got a soft pouch oh la la look at that okay so uh, this is the CM2100B with Bluetooth I'm not a big fan of installing Bluetooth apps on my phone for random equipment, but uh, who knows. So we've got ourselves a set of test leads. Let's check the quality. Okay, this is uh, higher than the standard, you know, um, low-end test gear uh, sort of quality. Definitely feels better than that. It is not stamped cat anything though. Hmm. I mean, for my uses, it's perfectly fine. For yours, it may not be. Uh, there's also these cat four covers. Oh, here we go. So cat two, one kilovolt. These uh, handles are usually they're stamped in this little area here, but it's not on these. But yeah, very um, soft silicone-y wires, and then do they have the covers? They don't have the covers on the end of the bananas. So I would say this is um, sort of uh, low mid-range sort of uh, clamps here, or uh, wires here. Now the clamp, it's, uh, it's a bit bulkier than what I'm used to, but oh, interesting. Ooh, this is very heavy. So let's uh, put some batteries in. They give you a screwdriver, which is pretty neat. I hate the fact that uh, these covers get screwed, but I do believe this is for North American certification. Um, children can't be able to easily access the, um, the batteries to swallow them. Um, now, there is something to be said about a lithium battery to be put in here but uh, I do not blame companies for not doing that yet we are getting to a point where it's becoming you know more and more viable but in my opinion if uh, a company does do that we need it to be replaceable so there we go that's plugged in uh, no no protective cover. Oh, maybe there is a protective cover, but it's just actually not. Yeah, but it's so clean. It looked like the actual cover. Oh, wow. Look at that. All right. So let's see. Uh, first, we got voltage. Let's see if it defaults AC or DC. It defaults DC. Very nice. And then you should be able to hit this to get AC. Yep. And then we've got the two amp range. You know, the really thin lettering here is really neat. Uh, 20 amp range, 100 amp range, non-contact voltage detector, which I believe is this little bump in the top here. Let's see. Yeah. It's not super sensitive though. Sometimes you can put it into uh, one of the leads here too. Um, then here you got capacitance, 
resistance, diode, and continuity. Uh, then you've got uh, frequency. And then off. Oh, we got off on both ends. I kind of like that. Okay. Uh, you got a backlight here and a hold function. So one press hold and this will do the backlight. Backlight is quite nice. You guys are just never going to be able to see it under the studio lights. Um, so let me just set up a little test and we can test the accuracy of this. All right, got my uh, Kaiweets tester box here. Uh, this one was the one that I've built with uh, Kaiweets sponsorship money to test their own multimeters. Now we're going to put this O1 multimeter through the ringer. I went back and I tested with my um, Kaiweets meter, the uh, HT118A, and also my O1 XDM 1041 benchtop meter. The Kaiweets, it uh, claims 6,000 counts. Uh, the O1 claims 55,000 counts, and this one here claims 20,000 counts. Now there's more to it, but the simple version is the more counts, the more precision is possible. I know there's more to it, but that's the layman's explanation. So let's start with the voltage testing. And every time I give you the result for uh, the this O1 here, I'll also give you the result I got from my two other multimeters. You might see an interesting pattern appear, but here we go. Here's on 10 volts. We got 9.983. On 7.5 volts, we've got 7.486. On 5 volts, we've got 4.992. And on 2.5 volts, we have 2.495. It seems to be settling in there. Next for the resistance test, same thing, checked it out with my Kiwi's HT118A and the XDM1041. Uh, I do these rechecks because of the uh, temperature, um, you know, variance. Also, I use the exact same leads that come with this one because I always test tools the way they are presented. So on the 10 ohms, plus or minus 0.01 or 0.1%, pretty much 10 ohms right on the money. For 100 ohms, 0.01%, pretty much 100 ohms, just shy. 1K, ugh, kind of bang on, just a little low. 10K, putting a lot of pressure on the probes here. And 100K, almost bang on. And for capacitance, um, we've got uh, 82 nanofarad and 100 nanofarad. Um, here we go. 81.7, pretty close. And 100. 99.6, again, pretty damn close. And here is actually the crux of why I love these multimeters. And I actually do recommend them to beginners, especially in the automotive industry, uh, is because we can have current flowing in a circuit, and in this case it's going to be this automotive brake bulb, and we can check the current kind of anywhere in the circuit just by clamping the meter onto it. And so um, these things are notoriously um, not as uh, precise as using a real multimeter uh, because it really reads the magnetic field. And so if you tilt this in any direction, you might get a little bit of differences. And even worse is down at lower currents, um, this thing has to be uh, very resilient to try to, to keep up with all the other magnetic fields in the region. So let's give this a shot. So I have the uh, Kiwi's HT118A uh, and we have just a single filament of this dual filament bulb here. This is the perk light and it's giving us just about half an amp. And now let's turn this thing on to the 2 amp range. And it is on AC. I thought it started on DC. Maybe it depends on what it was at. Uh, but you see right now it's picking up 235 milliamps. So we'll just zero that and then clamp it around our cable. Oh my god. Look at how accurate. So 472 and we're reading 474 milliamps. So it's doing really well in this case. Um, 
So that is actually quite nice. Let's reconfigure this to pull a little bit more current. All right, got the brake light circuit working now, a 1.78 or so uh, amps. And then I'm gonna zero this again. And right over here, 1.55. Okay, so it's dropped off a little bit in accuracy. Um, but it is getting towards the top of its range of measurement there. I'm just going to grab the measurement. I'm going to zero it again. I'm going to grab the measurement elsewhere. It should be the same everywhere. Uh, you see the zeroing depends on where you zero it. So now it's 1.794. Not too bad. Let's crank this up just another little notch. All right, we got both filaments lit at this point. So 2.23 something. Uh, so we're going to have to go up a range, but that's okay. Yeah, it did default to AC again. Uh, let's see if I go back to this one. Yeah, it is AC. I thought it did in, in DC, but I guess, no, you need to select it every time. Um, but here we go. So we're, go back to DC. We got another 230 milliamps of um, excess reading. And then clamp it here. 2.21, where we're getting 2.22 there. So it's really not bad. But see, the beauty is that you don't have to be um, cutting the circuit and adding your multimeter in series with your current measurement. You can just clamp the wire. And because the in a series circuit, the current is the same everywhere, you can clamp kind of like anywhere. So that's really the benefit of these things. And on top of that, uh, these multimeters typically can only read a maximum of 10 amps, and this Kaiwitz is no exception. Maybe you can see the 10 amps down there. Whereas this one apparently can read up to 100 amps. I have no way to pull 100 amps DC though. And so that's it for my first look at the 01CM2100B. Uh, um, don't forget, if you're into that, uh, this version does have Bluetooth connectivity. You can connect it to your phone. The app looks really cool. I am just a little bit iffy about uh, installing random stuff to my phone. Um, now, O1 is actually a fairly reputable company, so I wouldn't worry nearly as much as some of the offerings out there. So. If you guys are really interested, um, I'm going to put this thing through its paces either way, but if you guys are really interested in a little bit more long term and an actual review of the unit, I'll give it a shot and see what I like about it and um, see if it works out. But yeah, if you guys are looking for um, your single only multimeter, um, you can deal with one of these. I do like a more standard shape sort of multimeter. But in the automotive world, uh, if you're looking for your first multimeter, I actually do recommend these uh, DC capable clamp meters because these things are awesome. And especially uh, for things in the automotive world, being able to just clamp on that wire, getting a reading like that will help you out a lot. And you have no fuses to blow because you don't really need to. Um, so that's great. So for automotive things, I would definitely recommend something like this. Uh, for electronics use, um, I would say that this is a great secondary multimeter. This this could easily be your number two multimeter. I've always liked O1 products and this thing seems no different. Thanks for watching.